we would have conversations that I would not know how to have these conversations or how to talk about the things that we were talking about if I had never been to Mexico and I had never been a mixed race kid and I had never had this just yearn to know other cultures. I never could have got any of that if I had never if I had never been who I am. So like, yeah, the mixed breeding, was it cool growing up? No, it sucked. Hey, if you're not white, let me speak for white people real quick. I think if I want to bring up a kid, uh, first of all, it's going to be hope hopefully, hopefully, hopefully it'll be a pure Asian kid. You know, I'm very against race mixing, but not, oh my not, God. With, not the way that you expect, <laughs> not in the right wing nationalist way. Okay, hear me out here. Please don't clip this up and then send it to his uh, astrology podcast employers. You know, we're going to show his editor, right? I am biracial. I am biracial. So like this topic right here, I'm not like someone who's just like coming in and just talking out their butt. And y'all don't think because I have a southern accent, like I'm just some white hick from the middle of nowhere. No, y'all like I'm half Mexican, half white. Like this right here hits home to me so hard. Like, Naja Young, he's been talking about this for ever. Like, being a mixed person is very, it's just not comfortable, you know? And I'm not saying, like, it's the most uncomfortable thing people go through, but, like, yeah, it's, it's difficult. Because, like, what he was saying in the podcast was basically, I don't want to have, you know, mixed children and then they have a hard time going to school. He goes on to talk about them having a hard time with their lunch. He talks about them having a hard time being able to, like, make friends and have names. And what what do you do with that kind of kid? I went to school and, like, I complained that the food wasn't a little spicy. I didn't like it whenever, like, my friends would just, you know, they would have this idea about certain things. And then, like, me, like... It didn't help that I had a father who just completely was like in the left ballpark of everything. But nah, it, it's like on the, with my white friends, it's always been like, dude, like the Mexican stuff, you gotta leave it, you gotta leave it at the door. But like, even with my my friends from Mexico, when I went to Mexico and I was 18 and I started making friends down there, like, I would just say things that like, I'm like, yeah, like, like white people, we, we, we. You know, because I'm white, apparently, down there. We don't do things normal. Like, like I, I'm not gonna, I don't want to talk bad about us white people, but a lot of us don't dance. So, like, a lot of times, like, I would, like, be, like, kind of shaking like this, kind of like, you know. A lot of times, people just thought it was, like, weird that, like, I like dancing alone. Because in Mexico, people don't dance alone. They, unless they... They know what hip hop is, but a lot of people they just don't know what it is on the ranch. So no one wants to do it. And I'm out there and you know, music's pumping. I'll just be like You know, you 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 feel yourself a little bit, you know what I'm saying? I mean here in the US, I may go to a party, I may go to a party, I might dance one night and you know, the music's right. I might never dance with anybody. I just might be dancing alone. Don't cue sad music. I thought if I had 18 hard years of being Mexican, living in the U.S., if I just went to Mexico out of nowhere, I'd feel like I belong somewhere. Dude, when I got down there, I was like, dude, no one likes me. No one likes me, man. Oh, bro. Honestly, open to both. But if I could, if all things being equal, I'd rather my kid be fully Asian. Because if, if, they are, if they're half, you'll never fit in anywhere. Seriously. That's an interesting point. Okay. Yeah. If you're fully white, fully Asian, there's always a place where you can be part of the majority group. I th really, this ain't about me. It's not about me. It's not all about all the mixed breed kids. It's about you parents. Your parents who have a choice. Because me, like, I have no choice. If I want to have kids, my kids got to be a mixed breed baby. Like, it don't matter what I do. Like, if I name it, like, Raru. His last name will be Mesa, and that's cool. But if I'm with a white girl or a black girl or maybe an Asian, they're going to be like, why is this little kid that looks nothing like a Mexican like got a Spanish name? That's kind of weird. That's kind of sus, you know? All right, look, I'm going to go get me, you know, uh, a white woman, and then we're going to have a white kid. Well, guess what? Uh, if I name that kid like, you know, Justin, but his last name's Mesa, it's going to be like Justin Mesa. Y'all. 
some things like you can't reverse them. You know, you know what they say? Like once you open the can of Coke, it'll never be as fizzy again. You can't just put that thing in the fridge, man. And for real and all for realness, all for realness, I'm really thankful for my mom being my mom. I'm really thankful for my dad being my dad. I would really doubt whenever they had me, they were like, ah, we're going to ruin this kid's life. Ah. I'm just brought up in the right spot, you know? And like, that's kind of the purpose of this video is really just to bring awareness. People struggle with this. Like there's people who they're like different races and then out of nowhere, they wait till they're like older. And then like I did, I had to wait till I was 18 to go to Mexico because I had one parent that just didn't let me go. So like I went to Mexico and when I got down there, I was like, wow, like this is really cool. I guess this is why my other parent was like, so so like crazy he wasn't crazy there's just a whole country where people act like this uh but it also made me very tentative and realize a lot of things like oh yeah i'm really happy for my other culture because when i got back i was like man i was really uncomfortable down there <laughs> the way nigel said the mixing of the kids and he says it over and over in his stuff y'all gotta see it dude I think it's so funny because, like, if you bring up a kid the way you, you like, everyone says that, like, you should bring up your kid and make sure that they know both cultures whenever they're in that situation. Dude, it don't matter. That kid's either going to come out being one or the other. Like, it happens all the time. Like, me and my brother, I'm, like, super Mexican. Like, I am super Mexican. My brother... He is like white. Like he goes like <laughs> he don't want to learn Spanish. He don't want to eat with a tortilla. He don't want to uh make Mexican food. He don't want to uh like really ever do anything Mexican. But like it's fine. It's not like a problem cuz like for him it's great because he he gets to live a life where him and his friends, he knows what they like. He's very assimilated into his friend group and into his culture. Me, on the other hand, like, dude, like, when I'm with my Mexican friends, nobody thinks I'm Mexican. When I'm with my white friends, I keep on doing too much Mexican stuff. And then, you know, I have, like, friends who are, like, black and Asian, but they could care less. They're just like, I'm not black or Asian. So it's cool. That, that makes things a little easier. Uh, another thing that's pretty cool, though, is this whole talk of, like, all right, this mixed breeding concept. I don't care if you think it's wrong or not. Everyone is going to have a little brown or a little yellow or a little bit of white, a little bit of black in them before you know it, y'all. Everyone is going to be a mixed kid before you know it. It's going to be great, man. Okay, there's a standard of beauty, and then, like, there's this, like, standard of what a cool kid is. Dude, when race gets involved, like, I don't know where. Like, I had friends that, like, they were cool with me, and I was cool with them. But then the moment a racist kid came around, it was like we weren't even friends anymore. That sucks. A lot of times, because I was mixed, I would just go hang out with anybody. Like, I'd go hang out, especially in, like, the South. Like, I hung out with black kids. And then, like, all the time I got invited to, like, white kids' birthday parties. And, like, I would always wonder when I got to the birthday party, like, where's the black kids? You know, I would never say it like that. I would just be like, hey, see my know where so-and-so is and so-and-so is? And they would just be like, um, well, I invited my friends that I wanted to invite that my mom knew their moms and stuff. And I'm just like, yeah, when you grow up in this little small town, all the white parents know each other. That's right, boy. I'm thankful for my mixed breedness. Like, really, I am. Because, like, I've never had an excuse to not like somebody because of their race. I've got to experience a lot of things that a lot of normal people are just not accustomed to. I have white friends that tell me all the time, like, oh, I don't want to go walk up to this group of, like, Mexicans because I'm scared. So they want me to go walk up to them. I'm like, no, like... They're probably waiting for, like, beautiful white women to come up and talk to them. Or, like, vice versa. I've had, like, my Mexican friends who are like, we don't want to go talk to, to the white people. Dylan, you go do it. Bruh, I'm normally the youngest person in my Mexican friend groups. Why in the world are you sending a 10-year-old, 12-year-old, 18-year-old to go talk to people, man? Like, even now, I get sent, like... <laughs> 
It's so... Listen. Being Mexican, there are so many Mexicans that speak English, but they know that if the younger person, which is me, if I can speak English, they're like, hey, Dylan, uh, say in English this, this, and that. And I'm just like, you're speaking English. Like, what do, what do you want me to do? Go tell them what you just said? That literally happens, like, all the time. Like, oh, the other day, dude at Walmart, like, we know each other. Like, what's up, man? He goes, hey, go tell them, uh, yo quiero uh, 42s, 42 jeans. And I was like, you just asked me in English, bro. Go up there. And uh, we, we have conversations, me and my friends, all the time. And I'm just like, y'all, like... Y'all should really go to Mexico. And they're like, no, dude. I'm like, why not? They're like, because it's dangerous. I'm like, no, it's only dangerous if you're not being right. Like, just don't do drugs. You'll be good. And then they'll be like, well, the food, man. And I'm like, dude, even the people down there get sick if you eat the wrong food. Just don't go nowhere. If there is a restaurant and it is like lunchtime and no one is eating there, don't walk in, man. They're selling drugs, okay? Don't, no, no, no. No one get on here and be in the comments and be like, hey, this guy just said, if no one's eating at the restaurant, it's a drug deal. Yeah, no, 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 no. A lot of times they'll also talk about, like, they're so scared of, like, what if I, I mean, I can't speak Spanish, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, like, I'm sorry, but this world is so simple. Like, everywhere you go, I, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry, and oh, what's up, beautiful woman? <laughs> it happened with girls a lot more, because, like, you would sit there and just, like, stare at each other. And you're just smiling, like, kind of creepy. like <laughs> Whatever word you knew. Like, I, I didn't know a full sentence, but I'd be like, Gu like, like is gusta in Mexico. So, like, gusta Mexico? And they would be like, si, sí, like, it's mi país. Like, you know, and, like, they want to talk to you after that. They want to have a conversation with you. And, like, we'd have conversations like, gusta pizza, gusta tacos, gusta... Like, you can talk for a long time if you just try. And then when I was sitting there, like, they would teach me words. I would teach them words. Next thing I knew, I knew more Spanish. They knew more English. Like, that's how life is. And I I never really say this a lot. And it's kind of weird. When I was 18 and 19, like, yeah, I really did not like my parents not teaching me Spanish. But now at, like, 27 years old and I'm more mature and I'm a man, I'll tell you this. Whether I learned Spanish or not, life just kind of threw me where I'm at. And really, I mean, not being able to speak Spanish is part of my identity. And I kind of appreciate it that I have it. Like, I appreciate that I am so confident in who I am that I don't have to know what you're saying to me for me to have a conversation with you. I can probably have a pretty good conversation with people. And we never know two words that the other one's saying. But we have a conversation. And that's anywhere I go in Mexico. Now, in reality, yes, I do speak a lot more Spanish than I give myself credit for. But the point I'm trying to say is I was able to do that in Mexico. Dude, when I went to college, I met people from Asia. I met people from Africa. I met people from Europe. Like, we would have conversations that I would not know how to have these conversations or how to talk about the things that we were talking about if I had never been to Mexico and I had never been a mixed race kid and I had never had this just yearn to know other cultures. I never could have got any of that if I had never, if I had never been who I am. So like, yeah, the mixed breeding, was it cool growing up? No, it sucked. But as an adult, it's who I am. It's my identity. And like, forget Nigel. Forget Uncle Roger. Like, dude, you want to have a mixed kid, bro? <laughs> have a good time. <laughs> you got a kid in no time. I have this bad joke that I like to tell lately, and it's a stupid joke. It's 100% a joke. I tell my white friends that from college, I'm like, y'all, I'm just not having any luck with Mexican girls anymore. I might be dating white women again. Y'all, I've never had a long-term relationship with a Mexican girl. Like, it's always been white girls, so... I think that's another thing like it's nothing for me to joke and laugh about race because I am mixed race I don't feel like I have to be so grounded in all these 
racial support groups just because I see the sides of everyone, including white people. Uh, hey, if you're not white, let me speak for white people real quick. White people are very uncomfortable with us minorities right now. So, like, please let the white people be comfortable again so they can keep on ruling this country. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, I shouldn't have said that one? Oh, okay. I mean, they've only been around the country for 200 and something years. All right. <laughs> nah, like, I think cultures are cool and, like, mixing is cool and, like, it is who I am. So, like, like I've said already, like, I can never go and have a kid that's, like, 100% Mexican or 100% white. So, like, I deal with the fact that, like, no matter what I do, the kid's going to be, like, oh, that life is so hard, or, you know, and I'm just going to be like, it's okay, darling, or it's okay, bro, like, or, you know, it's okay, them, you better just, <laughs> you better just enjoy life, because it gets way harder whenever you have to go to your work, you know, and they're going to be like, hey, dad, why you only speak with a Spanish accent whenever you're talking to me, and be like, because that's how my dad talked to me, my dad's like super Mexican until he talks to me. Then he's like, hello, DJ. How are you? Bro. <laughs> All right. If y'all are liking this messy talk or messa talk show, messy, it's going to be messy something. But if y'all like it, please leave a comment. Please leave a like. And uh, I plan on doing a few of these, whether or not they get traction on my channel. So... I hope y'all still stay around and listen to a few. Uh, I plan on vlogging very soon. It's just a lot of my vlogs in the past have always been me getting content off my friends and off my uh, my family, which I'm thankful that they allowed me to do so. But a lot of times the content was very, um, it just wasn't very interesting, not necessarily to me. Like I was interested by it. But I, I honestly want to do some content that I also feel like is a little bit more something that even if they watched it, they would like it. Um, for instance, a lot of people, they just don't want to hear their own voice, so they don't like watching my videos. So they're like, oh man, I don't want to hear myself in my videos. But then again, I have friends who like watch every single vlog I have. And if you're one of those people, or you're just one of my true fans out there that watches my vlogs, because I know you're out there. I know you've called out my, my friends that's been in my vlogs. I know about y'all. Y'all, everyone who watches this, thank you for supporting this channel. And y'all, I'm going to do more content. And if you're not subscribed to my TikTok, go, go TikTok. You know what I'm saying? Oh, the Mississippi Boys Sports Podcast. We are going to be up and running on, of course, Facebook, of course, Spotify. We're going to be on all of it, but, you know, the sports season is kind of down right now. So hit us up. And if you have anything that you want me to talk about on this show, like for real, just leave a comment. I will probably talk about it because there's only so many things that I'm willing to talk about that I even think of. So... Yo, I go on. Dude, I get to the point now. I go to a Mexican restaurant, order the chicken sandwich. I don't care. Chicken sandwich is good. I don't care if it's in a Mexican restaurant or not. Mi Pueblo, one chicken sandwich. Extra cheese dip.